champion will be crowned. Number one, Northwestern, led by the nation's leading scorer, Izzy Skane, taking on a Boston College team. Their head coach, Acacia Walker, eyeing a second title in three seasons. It's Boston College and Northwestern for a national championship. Next. The joy of a championship is not promised. It is a pursuit. Yeah. A journey that is demanding and never direct. Every turn, a new challenge, a series of peaks, valleys, rises, and falls. These two teams have hunted the same elusive goal for weeks, tirelessly, relentlessly, without fear. I won't back down. taken everything to get here. With the final goal just outside their reach, which team will give even more to earn a joy? We welcome you to a wet Cary, North Carolina, where it has rained for the last 24 hours, but that won't stop us from crowning a national champion. Will it be number one Northwestern or the three seed Boston College Eagles? We've got two perennial powers in this sport and they are ready for battle for the 2023 Women's Lacrosse Championship. Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining us alongside the Hall of Famer, she and Stanwick Birch. I'm Jay Alter, we'll be joined by Dana Boyle in just a moment. Both of these teams have already won a championship this year. Northwestern, the Big Ten champs, Boston College won the ACC. Today, only one will be a national champion. And we have the two best teams in the nation. They deserve to be here. And the semifinal games are very interesting. Northwestern, they showcase their offense against a very powerful Denver defense. And then in the Boston College-Syracuse game, BC showcased their defense. That defense held Syracuse to a season low seven goals. A really interesting matchup today. Well, that Boston College defense will get tested today. Izzy Skane, the nation's leading scorer with 95 goals on the season. Six of those coming in the semifinal. Just a powerful performance for her in the semifinal game two assists as well and threes cause turnovers when you watch Izzy Skane play she can create something out of nothing no angle shots no problem for Izzy Skane she gets the net she makes the defenses pay and she hustles on the clear gets that ball back excellent job in the finishing ability she is a powerhouse and fun to watch it has been a long road for Izzy Skane to get to this moment and she is fired up to be here Dana and she's playing with a lot more joy and appreciation for the sport, Jay, after being sidelined during the entire 2022 season with an ACL tear. Now, that's a 10 to 12 month recovery for an ACL. So she had a lot of time to think about who is Izzy Skein without a lacrosse stick in her hand, to be introspective, to tap into that mental side of being a student athlete. During her recovery process, she got a tattoo on her wrist that says O-D-A-A-T, and it stands for one day at a time that when she was having a bad day, she'd look down at her wrist and use it as a mental reset. Also on the field, she uses it as a mental reset. Jay, the Skane train is not just back on track, full steam ahead for Izzy Skane. And many think Skane is playing better now than even before that ACL injury in 2022. For Izzy Skane, this is a huge moment. Everyone, Skane included on Northwestern, playing in their first ever national championship. Meanwhile, for Boston College, they're seemingly here every year. This is six seasons in a row. Boston College has made the national championship. So if you're a senior like Jen Medjid, this is your fourth national title game. The experience is real. Jen Medjid has a national title under her belt as well. Leads the team with 82 goals, 23 assists in the season. Medjid was stellar in the semifinal win against Syracuse. Five goals on six shots. She can create with a dodge, but she's excellent inside the eight meter. Cuts into space, can find the holes in the defense and deliver with the score. This is her last shot to win another national championship. Won that national championship in 2021. Head coach Acacia Walker has built this program into a perennial power. Who would have thought when they made their first trip in 2017 that they would be here six years in a row? Now, the one thing is for Acacia Walker, when they're in this national championship game, just a one and four record that win coming in 2021. You see the Boston College fans in that neon yellow 
they have made that a staple of championship weekend. The purple of Northwestern was a staple in championship weekend. They went on a run of eight consecutive national championship appearances from 2005 to 2012. Kelly Amante Hiller, their head coach, won seven of those titles as a coach, two as a player for Maryland. Well, the rain in Cary, North Carolina has not deterred an awesome atmosphere. The fans are out. It's been electric. Semifinal games, excellent crowd. It's really a great stadium to watch a game so close to the field. Players come to the bench. You see them react with the fans. practices this week and just talking to the teams. I think everyone has a greater appreciation of what it means to be here. Oh, I love the sign. How about that? Selling your Taylor Swift tickets to be in the rain here at Cary, North Carolina for a national championship, both programs. When they start their season, the expectation has become at a place like Boston College and Northwestern that you are going to play for a national championship. Bell Smith had a great quote us yesterday we've normalized it but it's not normal and doesn't that just sum it all up I mean they are six straight national championship appearances for this Boston College team it's been part of the DNA but early on the season it didn't look like they were gonna be necessarily be here they had a couple early season losses they've made some adjustments and as Boston College has done in the past they have peaked at the right time and playing some of their best lacrosse Asia Walker's Eagles in maroon and gold, Northwestern in white and purple. Every moment you've practiced your entire life leads up to this moment, this stage, to try and win a national championship. Samantha Smith in white for Northwestern, Ryan Smith in maroon for Boston College. And we are underway. The Big Ten champions and the ACC champions going at it for a national championship. And it's Boston College that starts with the ball. That's a big win for Boston College. College. They struggled at times in the draw control. Ryan Smith was able to come up with some key possessions in that game, but Syracuse won the few opening possessions. So big win. That's Shay Dolce, the goalkeeper, who's a freshman. She's got to get rid of it soon. She does so, put a little too much on that pass and turned it over. And Northwestern, a big reason why they've won 20 straight games headed into this national championship is their relentless ride. Think full court press in basketball. And what do they do? That ride creates the turnover in the opening minute of this game. And that's the mentality you have to have. If you don't come up with that opening draw possession, figure out a way to get it back. Great pressure by Northwestern, forcing that turnover. And that's an area that Boston College will need to clean up. 20 turnovers in the semifinal game. Way too much space. Dylan Amante can't capitalize, though. Wildcats have the backup after a missed shot closest to the ball. Wins possession. All eyes on 27 in white with Northwestern has the ball. That's Izzy Skane, the nation's top scorer. She is guarded by a first-team All-American defender today in Sydney Scales. That is a terrific matchup. And we get our first look at it here. Scales all over Skane, not giving her an inch. Has to pass out of it. Shot clock ticks to 20. Smart double team, just put the pressure on Izzy Skane. Madison Taylor double teamed in the crease. And it's Boston College ball. A late foul call came in before the crease call. So this will be a free position for Northwestern. So I guess the official was saying she was pushed inside the crease and so not necessarily a simultaneous foul. So the reason that she stepped in was as a result of the push.
push, so set up an eight meter. For the freshman Madison Taylor, Big Ten Freshman of the Year. Had five goals at her collegiate debut against Syracuse. It has not looked back. One on one with another freshman, the goalie Dolce, and she beats her. Madison Taylor opens the scoring for Northwestern. Fiftieth goal this season for the freshman. Watch her ability to make a no angle shot into an angle. First, it starts with the foul call. Got to stay out of that circle around the goal. The crease. Officials say she's pushed inside. Look where she set up on the outside of that eight meter, cuts to the inside. Beautiful job protecting her stick, making a low angle shot into something that's extremely high percentage. Great first score. You saw the stat earlier on. Northwestern number one in the nation in their free, free position shot conversions. The Big Ten freshman of the year on the biggest stage. Smith and Maroon talking to her circle players around the draw, trying to communicate where she thinks the ball is going to go. Boston College has won both draws to start this national title game. Failed to get a settled offensive possession because of that relentless ride of Northwestern. Now the Eagles have numbers. Cassidy Weeks spun her way free. Sandy White recovers. Now back to full strength defensively for Northwestern. This is really our first look at the Eagles offense. They were out of sorts offensively in that semifinal win against Syracuse. What needs to change today, Dana? They need more shots. They only took 17 shots, and I want to see more players like a McKenna Davis get involved. Only two assists in that game, and I want to see more production from Cassidy Weeks. All seven threats have to be present against this really stifling Northwestern defense. Jen Nedjit was spectacular in that game. Five goals and six shots, but it's got to be just more than Jen Nedjit scoring. You're exactly right, Dana. They need to generate more shot opportunities. They were extremely efficient. But this Northwestern team, a high-powered offense, they got to combat them. Shooting space called. That's a safety call. You're new to this sport. Goggles are the only protective gear that the women wear. So if a defender gets in that path to cage, that'll be whistled as shooting space. And you get set up on the eight meter closest to where the foul occurred on that hash mark. Big opportunity for Belle Smith, the junior out of West Hampton Beach, New York. 50 goals on the season. One on one with Molly La Liberty. Great save. La Liberty to the rescue. Got to move La Liberty. La Liberty, a left hand keeper. Got to make sure you're shooting into space. Look at the save here. Bell Smith does a nice job increasing her angle, cutting the inside, but that's a release from the high. Shot right into the goalie stick. Too easy for La Liberty. Don't want to get her hot. This is the biggest stage she's played on. D3 played at Tufts last year. An amazing player for Tufts has come into Division I level pretty much seamlessly, taking the starting job and excellent saves. Eight saves in that semifinal win against Denver. Here's Izzy Skane. Has a step. It draws the free position, and this is where Izzy Skane is at her best on the eight meter. Shooting space on 13. Skane can just rip it from the eight meter, a far out shot without taking an inch, and get to the inside. They give space, and you need to be back. Very unpredictable. Looks like she's going to try to take it in on the run. No, fires too much on it. High heat over the cage in Boston College, there for the backup. And that's great deception. The way she planted her body weight over top of her foot, it looked like she may try to run that ball in, but she's able to step back, reset, and shoot that. A lot of heat on that, but Boston College is able to get the missed shot. I'm a little surprised, too, Sheen, with the rain coming down and the sticks. I would have thought she would have ran in, protected her stick in a tight space, and then released. 
got to make sure you also have backup behind the cage. When you are on the 8 meter, you really want to make sure your offensive player, somebody's position behind the cage, you're running out. But a heads up play for BC to get the ball. How wet is it down there, Dana? Oh, it, it's coming down. All the players, when they come off on and off the field, they're using the cleat gates to wipe their feet off. I heard some BC players yesterday in the hotel use blow dryers to dry their shoes. They practiced outside yesterday. Northwestern was inside at the indoor facility at UNC's campus. Playing on grass when it's raining like this, Sheehan, how does that affect you as a player? Well, this, first of all, the grass here is impeccable. They, a beautiful stadium, but you, whenever you're in grass, you got to worry about a little bit of slippage, especially the stringing of your stick. You don't want your pocket to get illegal. And we were talking earlier, Sheehan and Jay, about defensively, how you have to dictate what the offense is doing. You might slip a little bit more than the offense who's sort of controlling the ball on that side. Boston College already with two turnovers. Got to make sure that they take care of the ball. Now you cannot give this Northwestern offense extra possessions. They will usually make you pay. One of the great things that this Northwestern offense does is they create space. Watch the off-ball players overload to one side, create pass to Cage. Look at all the space Madison Taylor has. Taylor, stick knocked out of her hand. That's an easy foul call for this officiating crew. And Taylor, who scored the lone goal of this title game so far, has a chance to score a second here on the free position. You can hear the officials on the field saying 14, go behind. That's the, the player that fouled goes four meters behind. A lot of whistles in women's across. Typically when you see the whistles right in front of the cage, they're either for a three seconds violation, shooting space, or any dangerous checks into the body, the head neck area. Taylor beats Dolce again. Madison Taylor with both Northwestern goals to start this championship game. Great quick start for Northwestern. Second straight game with two or more goals. Both goals coming at the eight meter. Great look here on the center hash mark. What she does ever so slightly, she moves to her right-hand side just a bit. That frees up her left-hand side, gives her a little bit more separation from the defender trying to crash in to get a stick on stick. We've already seen a lot of eight meters being whistled early on in this game, so the defenses need to adjust to that. Look at the season summary for Northwestern. 6-0 in the Big Ten. Overall, a 20-1 record. The lone loss being the first game of the season back in Syracuse, 15-16. Number one offense in the nation with 17 goals per game. I don't have it! She has it! Three! She has it! Three! You can hear Boston College's Ryan Smith saying she has it. means that she Three. thinks it's going to go towards the northwestern side to her direction. It's amazing what you can feel as a center taking that draw. You understand where the ball is in the pocket and if you've got the advantage or not. She's trying to alert the circle players on where their positions position themselves to try to run the ball. Now we just showed you Northwestern losing that opening game of the season and then winning 20 in a row. One of those wins all the way back on February 19th. That was against Boston College. Won at 15-14. How much can you really take away from a game that was played a few months ago? I think those February games, first of all, that loss still hurts them, but you gotta forget about it completely. It was a, probably a great way to start the season. You like some of those wake up calls. I'm sure they would have loved to avenge the loss along the way, but BC did that for them. Now they're looking to take down BC. No one on this Northwestern team has won a national championship and it's been on their minds for their entire careers. Another free position for Northwestern. They are two for three on the eight meter today. Shea Dolce still waiting for her first save of this championship game. The freshman came in during that Northwestern regular season meeting, but at that point she was not the starter yet. It was still Rachel Hall 
Dolce only played 17 minutes in that game. That's a turnover against the Wildcats. Exactly what the Boston College defense needed. That is a rare miss for Northwestern. Aaron Quickendall, number two. They work so well together. She and Izzy Skane trying to do a little flip pass. It goes Aaron. Sydney Scales able to come up with that possession. That's a huge win. Full field pressure coming for the Wildcats. Long outlet pass from Hunter Roman. Now Bell Smith with it. Two-way midfielder Smith makes it seamless to go from defense to offense. Good recovery for Northwestern. Getting back defensively. Another errant pass. Those are the things that you have to clean up. Third turnover for Boston College. So uncharacteristic, too. Some of these are just, it's not because of the weather. It may just be the nerves. Just got to take that extra second and not let it get mad at yourself. You made the mistake. It's time to move on. Now just try to get the ball back. But both teams, which is some uncharacteristic early errors. And they worked so hard to adjust in the clear. They brought a midi back for Boston College. That was something that defensive coordinator Jen Kent was yelling in from the sidelines. And then they turn it over. So they got to play defense again after that last possession that Northwestern had. That's tiring for the D. Here's Skane. Triple team comes in, dispossessed. That is Boston College defense. And the Eagles are off and running with Cassidy Weeks. Skane still chasing. She never gives up on that ball, especially when she loses it. And Northwestern wins it right back. The defense, we thought this was going to be an offensive powerhouse between the two of these programs. The defense is once again the stars for both these teams coming up with some key turnovers. And after a chaotic sequence, Koikendall smart to just settle things down for Northwestern. The Wildcats at early 2-0 lead. Looking for their first national championship since 2012. Boston College, meanwhile, just won it two years ago. Once again, the defense causing a turnover. Dolce way out of cage. Look at the freshman fearless on the clear. And that's a great pass. Smart move by Dolce getting his space. Love how Ryan Smith changed the positioning for stick to help her out. Pushing the tempo. La Liberty! Great save! She is dialed in early. Good stop and the rebound, more importantly, going to Northwestern's way. BC's got to have some better shot selection. Love to see them use the ground, shoot low. When you're coming in transition, it's really hard for the goalie to track where the ball is. Make her have to move. Watch the save here. Cassie Weeks winds up, but once again, high to high, right into the stick. Got to change the levels, use some deception. Madison Taylor, 25 in white. She's got both Northwestern goals today. Finds Izzy Skane, the nation's leading scorer. Off to Koikendall. Koikendall's the Robin to Skane's Batman. Those two have been a dynamic duo the last four seasons for Northwestern. Koikendall trying to go behind the back, off the mark. Very deceptive, and another turnover for Boston College. Five turnovers in this opening quarter for the Eagles. Sloppy play, it is a rainy day here in North Carolina. You are these are very uncharacteristic turnovers here. Yeah, and that just needs an extra second of patience for some of these uh, sloppy passes. We are seeing some slippage, though, of the players, especially on Boston College defensive end right here, where North Carolina's trying to, uh, Northwestern trying to attack. Boston College's defense has kept them in this first quarter. Northwestern has piled on the pressure. Yes, they've allowed two goals, but they have been excellent, whereas the offense, five turnovers, only two shots. They just can't find a, a flow, a rhythm. No, and you can see, I'm seeing some mud shoot off some of the cleats right now, so it, the footing doesn't look very secure. However, these passes just have to take the extra second. If you're having a hard time, that's when you want to shorten things up. Don't go for the long bombs. Carry it from behind. Northwestern putting in the pressure. Excellent move by Jen Medjid. Good recovery by Northwestern. 
the defense is starting to slip, so taking, working the dodge and the one-on-ones is going to be to the advantage of the offense. Go behind, whistle start. Yeah, behind. Hey, four, four on the 12. Good. Here's Jen Medjid at five goals in the semifinal. Passed it off too high, and that is six turnovers in this first quarter. Just, I mean, these are things, you can see the coaching staff on the sideline for Boston College. Seems at a loss as well. Boykendall dunks in off the top of the bar. Hit pipe, bounced out. And Shea Baker scoops it up for Boston College. Could the Eagles get something in transition? Good opportunity here. McKenna Davis off to Courtney Weeks. Spins her way free. Can't finish it. Got to shoot low. Love that Jem Edges got the backup of that shot. Is this going to be a yellow card? Jem Medjid holding her head. Doesn't look like a yellow card is going to be awarded. Medjid pleading her case, but she does get whistled for the foul. But not on the 8 meter. They back it up to the 12, so... Not as good of an opportunity for Medjid here. You'd have to lean on Medjid in this spot. 82 goals on the season. Boston College's leading score, five goals in that semifinal. I thought she was on the eight. Pick, pick it up, Brad. Four, nice, Brad. The officials talking about the positioning of where Medjid should be placed. She's outside the 12 meter. I like when she attacks the cage, though, because she can draw the foul. She's very good coming off the eight meter. This Northwestern defense is very aggressive. Bouncer into the side netting. Bell Smith thought for a moment that was in the back of the net. That looked like a great take for Bell Smith. La Liberty is pumped up in the cage, coming up with some excellent stops. And I like that she used the ground ball as a clear of the Liberty. They practiced that yesterday. Granted, they were indoors at the UNC football facility, but that's a great idea to roll it on the ground. And you saw the Northwestern defender came to it. Round again! The transfer from Mercer makes it 3-0 Wildcats. Western fans loving this. Haley Radigan, 60th goal this season. 93 goals in her Mercer career. She's contributing to Northwestern. Look at that sidearm shot and the stick drop. Northwestern with a 3-0 lead.
at Boston College, led by their head coach, Acacia Walker. They're the first program to make six straight championship games since Northwestern did it. They actually made eight straight from 2005 to 2012, a dynasty built by Kelly Amante Hiller, the Wildcats, an incredible seven and one record in those eight national championship games. And yet in the 11 years since that 2012 title, this is their first time back in the national championship. Five losses in the semifinals. And boy, Kelly Amante Hiller's team, they have waited patiently for this opportunity. And so far, Sheehan, they have made the most of it. An early 3-0 Northwestern lead. They have started out strong. And they remember that heartbreak, the pain of losing the semifinal game last year in Baltimore. They bottled that up. But there's a new sense of joy and gratitude for this entire Northwestern program, along with the coaching staff with Kelly Amante Hiller. They appreciate this journey. They realize, I think she realizes how hard it is to get there. It became routine for them to be in the national championship, to win the national championship. And anything else was considered a failure. And I think she's really appreciated the process along the way this year. Talking to the players, they just, this has been their goal. They're so excited to be here. And I don't think they feel the pressure. Doesn't look like it at all in this first quarter. Under 20 seconds left in it, Northwestern trying to add a fourth goal. So Boston College putting that really tight pressure on Haley Radigan. Radigan just fell to the grass, no call. Four seconds left, Koikendall goes low. Dolce's there, but couldn't keep it. And the first clock comes to a close. The opening 15 minutes, no doubt about it, it's belonged to Northwestern. Kelly Amante Hiller trying to win a 10th national championship would be eight as a coach, two as a player, and her Wildcats strong in the opening quarter, a 3-0 lead. Can they hear me? Um, she and Jay, they're taping the sticks on the sidelines because their hands are slipping. Everyone on Boston College has come off and used tape to tape around their stick. Their hands are slipping, and that could be why the ball is kind of going all sorts of sorts. Start of the second quarter in the national championship. Boston College trailing Northwestern 3 0. Let's hear from the Eagles head coach, Acacia Walker, who's down with Dana. We also got another guest, Wesley, here, her daughter. But, coach, down by three at half. How do you create more offense? We need to take care of the ball. Can't be careless with the ball. Handle the pressure. We talked about it. We prepared for it. Uh, now they just have to do it. Coming out of that timeout, you address the pace of Northwestern. How do you combat that pace? We stretch them out and play the way we want to play. We play in our offense exactly how it's designed, taking care of the ball, sharing the ball, sharing the space. We've got to own the ball. We've got to cherish it. Thanks for the time. Thank you. Now, Boston College and Acacia Walker held scoreless for only the second time in a quarter all season. This is a team that put up 20 goals in the quarterfinal against a really good Notre Dame team. But they have been out of sorts both in the semifinal and again here today 
in the opening 15 minutes. What needs to change, Sam? Well, you know, this is actually it's kind of part of the identity of Boston College. They have had some slower starts. They've dug themselves in a hole, but what's set BC apart is their ability to battle back. So it's almost like when they get down by a few goals, then they're able to turn on the light switch. This isn't the performance that they wanted to start this national championship game. But they have to take care of the ball, just like Acacia Walker was saying. They need more shots. Jem Medjid, their leading goal scorer, didn't have a shot in that first quarter. Starts with taking care of the ball on offense and defense for them. Excellent job right now for them, forcing a turnover. They're saying, are they saying it's tipped? That's going to be Boston College's ball. Bring it on, on this clear, two, they need to take care of it. it and I like to see the ball in Jem Medjid's stick. You want her to get hot. Both teams with six turnovers. Almost seven. Nice win back by Scales. First team All-American defender keeping her composure in the clearing game. And another point of emphasis, Sheehan, with the turnovers from Acacia Walker was be weary of the back checks. Yep. Just because you beat the Got Northwestern it. defender doesn't mean they're going away. And you saw it there with Sydney Scales, yep. but they unfortunately could get it into their offensive end successfully. Exactly. Got have it. to be aware of the defender, even when you think you have them beat. You gotta have eyes in the back of your head, your head's on a swivel, making sure you, you feel the pressure, protect that stick. Boston College has struggled to unlock this Northwestern defense. Who will be the key that can finally break through? Maybe McKenna Davis, the lefty here on the run. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. A ball in the back of the net, but a whistle a blows check. the play okay. dead. Here behind her. You can hear the official start. saying a dangerous check, so that whistle swiping start. check, even though it didn't make contact, they're going to stop the play. The 12, put put Bell Smith on that 12 meter. seconds left on the timer trying to go inside to Medjid she had five goals in the semifinal can't connect there and that's now seven turnovers without a goal for Boston College Northwestern playing a zone defense and they're putting off pressure so some of those feeds inside may look open for a second but Northwestern will collapse in on them you have to be very aware when you're trying to feed the ball in the eight meter and try to make those connections. Would love to see them still work the dodge, try to draw some fouls. But Jed Medjit is one of the best at cutting into space. Just make sure you have to hit her early before the defense is able to react. We've seen Boston College, though, dig them out, themselves out of some holes. Big comeback wins against Notre Dame, Syracuse. They were down in the Syracuse the game on Friday. Play. Goalie ball, seventh turnover for Northwestern. So both teams with a lot of turnovers. Although it feels like Boston College's turnovers have been way more costly. Northwestern's been able to convert on the offensive end. No, great point, Sheehan, about the comebacks. We saw that on Friday. They got down 3 0 in that game. Same score that we have right now. You just need something on the offensive end. The Eagles have really lacked any rhythm any flow how do you change that in game you know they tighten things up so they need to make sure that you're just taking an extra second ball movement off ball movement as well those standing and watching this looks like a much better offensive set already off ball players occupying the defenders get that zone shifting and moving with the ball movement i also want to see them just you move the ball but also move your defender good job bell smith trying to penetrate in Magid weaving through traffic. Don't know if that was La Liberty or the pipe. Either way, Boston College resets, reloads. I like that play. Martello's able to cut into the inside. They're able to get the rebound. Gives them a, a fresh shot clock. Here's Martello, scored the game winner in the semifinal. It scores the first goal of the day for Boston College in the national championship. Now they needed somebody to step up, and finally, Kayla Martello delivers. Much needed goal, goal for Boston College. 59th goal and a major.
major go-ahead goal in the semifinal game versus Syracuse. Had some great defensive plays. Look at the catch Martello, the big pump fake, and then she's able to generate a little bit more space from her defender, moving to the side, stepping up field a bit, shoots across her body, non-stick side. That's a good shot. Starts from her shoulder, across her body, to the non-stick side of La Liberty. Look at the season summary for Boston College. Three losses, Northwestern, North Carolina, and Denver, but currently on a 12-game win streak. Acacia Walker and her staff has her team peaking at the right time. She's told us in the past, they've been in six straight national championship games, and every season they've had lulls, times when they've had to readjust things, mix things up, whether with, is with the lineup or their practices. Acacia was just talking to me. She wanted us to Part. So it's Boston College ball. Great insight there from the official. Fortunate to have them mic'd up all afternoon. You know, when we show the Boston College season summary, it took a little while to find their identity. What would life after Charlotte North look like? And they really came on strong at the end of the season. Won the ACC championship for the first time in school history. And they came into this NCAA tournament with so much confidence, a clear identity particularly on the offensive end. A slow start today, but they're finding form! Back-to-back -back goals! In just 40 seconds, Boston College has made it a one-goal game. Two big-time scores of Boston College. Bell Smith held scoreless in the semifinal game. Beautiful cut in the inside. Jen Nedje with the pass inside and the quick finish. That's if you're gonna feed inside the eight meter, gotta be moving. So you see Bell Smith cuts through. She takes that pass on the run. And then look at the placement of the shot. Non-stick side, was released from about at her head level. Down to the bottom corner. Much better deception on these last two scores for Boston College. All right, here we go. And I think the difference, Sheehan, is that Jen Medjid is not in the inside on that. She was on the outside feeding in, and there's such a heavy emphasis from the Northwestern defense that when Jen Medjid is in the middle, they're going to double her up quickly. So her coming to the outside of the eight by the elbow opens up the middle of the field, and Acacia Walker wants to keep attacking that area. Well, that's the beauty of Boston College. We've seen it so many times. A slow start, maybe 15 minutes without a goal. It does not affect their belief or confidence and they're looking for a third goal in a row here in the second quarter the eagles have fired all three shots northwestern yet to even get an attempt on goal so far bc had four shots the entire first quarter three shots already you can feel the momentum shift from here turnover to the northwestern ball sammy white converted from midfielder to defense she has been outstanding the sophomore out of baltimore when you're going against this northwestern defense and bc's for that matter these offensive players you have to be aware of your spacing between your defender the sticks are constantly up in the passing lane they're looking for blocks they're looking for interceptions or the check so got to really make sure that your stick is free and clear when you go to make those passes Northwestern still a 3-2 lead even after the back-to-back -back Boston College goals. Their leading scorer and the nation's leading scorer, 27 and white. On the left side of your screen, Izzy Skane. She is scoreless so far today, has only attempted one shot. That's going to be a, a foul call. And it looks like a yellow card is going to be pulled out from the official. Yellow card, a check, danger check across the body. So Hunter Roman is going to be sidelined for up to two minutes. Let's take a look at this. Watch number 42 in red. Her stick goes across the body. And does she, 
a dangerous check, so it doesn't necessarily matter. And it caused her check that went over the head and pulled the stick back, caused the offensive player's stick to hit her head. And now there's a decision that needs to be made. If you're the freshman Madison Taylor, you've scored twice Here today. Do you go to goal? Or do you pull it out because your player up for the next two minutes? You go. She's already scored two goals on the eight meter. She's at center hash mark. She goes. And she goes and missed it. Koykendall have the backup, fortunately, for the Wildcats. And Northwestern's so good coming off the eight meter. You don't want to take up that goal, take away that goal. Even though they're, they're you know, so efficient when they are a player up, work the ball around so well. Good job by Erin Corkendall. She draws a shooting space foul. Again, the little pumping. You've got to, as an offensive player, you have to have the opportunity to shoot. You need to be looking to shoot. And when you do that quick pumping, you're signaling the officials, I can't shoot or else this will be dangerous for the defensive player. Let's see what Corkendall does. Decides to pass out. Finds Dylan Amonti on the run. Decides not to fire. Radigan weaving in. Draws the whistle. This will be another free position on the player up for Northwestern. Radigan, who has a goal to her name. Interestingly, interestingly enough, all three goals today by Northwestern scored by a lefty. Two for Taylor, one for Radigan. Radigan's been the player that BC has opted to face guard, really closely guard. We thought they might do that to Izzy Skein. They took Megan Tyrell out of the Syracuse game. Goes low, whizzes wide. Wildcats, the officials say, had the backup. I thought Boston College was closer. Closest to the ball when it goes out of bounds on a shot. Should get possession. They give it back to Northwestern. Falls the skein. Itches away. Hit the pipe. Izzy Skane trying to perfectly place it in that corner. Back inside. Dolce snuffs the shot. And Cassidy Weeks can start the clear. Two pipe shots and a stuff by Shea Dolce. Big defensive stop while they are a player down. That is a huge energy boost right now. Now they got to take care of the ball. Shot clock is in effect. You see Shea Dolce semifinal. Seven goals allowed, seven saves. Just a true freshman. She's been able to reset. We saw her scored on early in the Syracuse game. She was able to reset, come up with some key stops. Another turnover for Boston College. That's down nine. And this one could be costly. Northwestern all alone. Radigan, she scores! in on the player up and Northwestern back up by two. What patience. After an excellent defensive stop, Bell Smith doesn't able to make hit the pass. It goes downfield. Northwestern can make you pay in transition. Watch the patience of Radigan. Gets the inside and she makes sure that Shea Dolce is completely out of position. Shoots into the wide open net. Northwestern looking for the first national championship in 2000 since 2012 and Radigan makes her pay.
Midway through the second quarter, Northwestern leading Boston College 4-2 to two here at the Division I Women's Lacrosse Championship. This is a sport that just continues to grow each and every year. So much momentum behind it. Molly La Liberty, you know, there are 502 NCAA Women's Lacrosse programs, including Division Two and Three. Molly La Liberty was playing Division Three a year ago. She was the goalie of the year for Tufts, now showing she can do it at the Division I level, Dana. And she was so done with lacrosse that she donated all of her gear before she went into the transfer reporter, left her full-time job at Raytheon, got picked up by Northwestern, and she has been pumped up. She has her friends from Tufts University, her teammates in the crowd. The girl in purple, if you see her on the camera, she was the defender for the Liberty, so she was going up to them after three goals in that semifinal game. When they went down by Denver, she needed a reset and a reboot. And her friend on the sidelines made fun of her spray tan, and it snapped her right out of it, and Northwestern came back in the lead. <laughs> How great is that? Teammates at the Division Three level at Tufts now showing up and cheering on. Look at that passion. In a national championship game. You know, we're fortunate to bring you the D1 championship today live on ESPN, but want to recognize the Division II champions, the Pace Settlers, and the Division Three championship being played right now in Salem, Virginia, between Gettysburg and Middlebury. Good lacrosse knows no level. Molly La Liberty is certainly proof of that. Well, I think you're going to see a lot more of the transfers in the transfer portal. Some of the players that maybe go D2 or D3 for certain different reasons. There's a lot of different reasons people choose a program. La Liberty saying that she was a little bit nervous from the changing from D3 to D1, but lacrosse is lacrosse. What a takeaway. Excellent anticipation, Jane Hansen. Radigan wasn't ready for it. Scales battling with Skane and Sydney Scales showing why she's a first team All-American defender. Not only has she been excellent on Izzy Skane all half long, but comes up with a crucial ground ball there. So many impressive things from that Sydney Scales ground ball. One, the anticipation speed to get to it, to keep it in balance, keep her feet in balance, and then pass it off safely. Big time play. She was looking forward to the rematch, getting back on Izzy Skane, when you're a great defender, you want to have the toughest matchup. A lot of those defensive principles come from the basketball court. That was her first love, played for her father, Dave, from third grade to eighth grade. He told me that her footwork, her communication that you see on the lacrosse field translates from that basketball play. Here's Northwestern in transition, piling on the pressure, leading by two, looking for more. Room for Emerson, Bolig runs in, save Dolce. And Northwestern decides to settle things down. Smart job, there's a lot of time left. 58 seconds on the shot clock. Here's Izzy Skane. She'll make you pay from there. The nation's leading scorer adds another. Coming off a six goal performance in the semis, leads Division One with 96 goals. Look at the pick set by Izzy Skane. And then she just feels her defender. So ball watching, Izzy Skane cuts to space. Beautiful pick and roll, and she throws in the fake. A little extra fake. Shea Dolce comes up high in the crease. Beautiful job. Izzy Skane just can create her shots. Love watching her off ball, off ball, in defense, in the transition. 5-7 from Michigan. She plays a lot bigger than that. Two-time Tawartan Award finalist, two-time Big Ten Attacker of the Year. Missed the entire 2022 season due to an ACL injury. Last year in Baltimore, Maryland, during the Final Four, she was on the sidelines with an iPad watching her team suffer that defeat. And she has just, the smiles that she's had after all the big wins that Northwestern has had this year, you can feel the joy. And what's most impressive to me is how she's battled back. Because we see way too many injuries in the sport of women's lacrosse. It can be devastating. The ACL, so tough to recover from. But she has come back better and stronger. 
not lost her first step. She attacks hard. She doesn't look scared at all. Her recovery's been remarkable. And she told us, she and that her vocal leadership has really improved. She used to lead by her play on the field, but being sidelined, it forced her to be more vocal. And you can see her talking to her teammates out there on the offensive end. Here's Elle Hansen. Dolce got a piece of it. That's her fourth save. Northwestern piling on the pressure here at the end of the first half. That is eight unanswered shots for the Wildcats in the second quarter. And now a relentless ride. Dolce getting chased. She's got to get rid of it. The freshman in trouble. And Boston College smartly takes a timeout. No, Dolce, just a freshman, certainly capable of helping in the clearing game, but was certainly in trouble there. Smart timeout, especially with a lot of the turnovers for Boston College leading to Northwestern goals. Gives us an opportunity to take a look at the Capital One Cup standings. Teams competing for a combined $500,000 in scholarship donations from Capital One. My wife, who's a Georgia Bulldog, will be happy Georgia's leading the way over on the men's side, winning another national championship on the football field. And coming up later tonight, Sunday night baseball matchup, the series finale between the Phillies and the Braves, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN. ESPN Deportes and ESPN Radio. Our coverage begins 6 Eastern with baseball tonight. Boston College trailing 5-2 here in the national championship. The Eagles here for a sixth straight season. Just one in four when they get to this title game. Dana, what's the mood in that Boston College huddle? Keisha Walker really wants them to focus on helping Shea Dolce with the outlet. She said, forget about pushing the transition. I don't care about the fast break. You need to help your goalkeeper, Shea Dolce. She wants a low outlet by the defenders. She wants the attackers to come forward, and she wants the middies to really help in the midfield so she doesn't get stuck on an island. It's a great takeaway because they have had troubles with their turnovers, 11 turnovers for Boston College. So when Dolce gets the ball, give her some help. Northwestern smartly putting on the pressure, and they are so good at creating cause turnovers in the ride. Those long outlet passes look beautiful when they connect, but when they don't, that can result in a goal for the other team. So it'll be Cassidy Weeks. It starts with the ball for Boston College. Only seven shots today. Only took 17 in the semifinal against Syracuse. Somehow it was enough to win that game 8-7, but they average on the season more than 30. In Northwestern with 15 shots, so more than double the amount of shots than Boston College. The Eagles have not taken a shot in seven minutes. There's Courtney Weeks. She's been quiet today. Twin sister of Cassidy. Those two have been so good for Boston College over the last four seasons. Jen Medjit still without a shot for Boston College. Has it here. Passes to Cassidy Weeks. Trying to spin her way free. Twisting, turning. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Looking for the breakthrough. Three seconds, Three seconds called against Northwestern. This is a great opportunity for Boston College. When a defender is in that eight meter area for more than three seconds and not guarding a player within a stick's length, that's what three seconds is called. It's a safety call trying to prevent crowding inside the eight meter so that people can shoot safely. Hey, whole group, white, especially one step back home. Get for Jen Medjic. She's had a hard time Three getting a shot white. off. She's excellent coming off the eight meter. Charges in. Didn't get her hands completely free. Five seconds on the shot clock. BC has to hurry. They had Courtney Weeks right on the doorstep. She couldn't control it. Ball back to Northwestern. And the shot clock is off for the Wildcats. A three goal lead. Kelly Amonte Hiller taking a timeout. 
An opportunity for her to draw up one last play of this first half to try and add to this three goal advantage. Northwestern dominating the possession in this first half. Well-deserved three goal lead so far. We are happy to bring you the 2023 Women's Lacrosse Championship here live on ESPN. And you can visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. In the semifinal game, just an 8-7 win for Boston College over Syracuse. BC was able to convert on three goals from coming off the eight meter on the free position shots. 0 for 2 today. In a game where you're having a hard time generating shots, you have to make sure you deliver on the eight meter. The high shots hit in the top corner looks really great when you can move the goalie, but they, I think they should opt for some lower shots, some high, higher percentage shots. And coming up at halftime, we have Drew Carter and the two-time Tawaraton winner, Charlotte North, who won a national championship with Acacia Walker in Boston College. Here in Cary, North Carolina. They will have you covered at halftime. Really curious what Charlotte is thinking of this first half. She's played in this national championship game twice before. As you mentioned, got the win over Syracuse in 2021 for the national championship, but also felt the heartbreak last year when they lost to UNC. So been on both sides, but uh, what's been impressive about this Boston College team all season long is their ability to come back from a deficit to generate the momentum with a big stop. Big possession here for Northwestern. Yeah, the ball will start in the stick of Izzy Skane. At times this season, you felt it's a magic stick. The clear front runner for the Tawaraton Award, which goes to the best player in lacrosse. One minute remaining, one minute. So right now, just opting with no shot clock on. Looks like they're gonna just hold this for the last shot. Will they just set up an isolation play for Izzy's game? She'll dish the ball out. 33 assists coming into this game on the season. Leads the nation with goals scored. 96. And they're gonna create an isolation play. Look at the off-ball players, just creating space and room. As a step, goes lefty and scores! Izzy Skane! <laughs> Northwestern called her number and she delivers again. to win this year good dodge up top gets in her left hot left hand side look at the freedom she has with her stick so much room over there because the off ball players cut through on her team gives her the space to just body through what a play she can make a scoring play out of nothing we've seen her, seen her score the no angle she can split through a double and triple team Look at the list of the name, all-time points leaders at Northwestern. Hannah Nielsen, what an unbelievable player. Don't have it. Three, don't have it. Izzy Skeen, number right two. Shannon Smith. Three, get her down the line. I'm going three. Ready? Three. And what's crazy is that Izzy Skeen still has another year of eligibility because of the ACL injury. She plans on taking it, so no doubt that she will eventually pass Hannah Nielsen at some point. Boston College, 10 seconds left, trying to pull one back right before halftime. Have to hurry inside Martello, way off the mark. And Northwestern will take a four-goal lead into halftime. The turnovers have really hurt Boston College. 12 in the first half. Northwestern has come on strong. Their number one offense in the nation, putting up six goals. BC is going to make need to make some real adjustments offensively, generate more shots, just nine shots in that first half. To 
12 costly turnovers for Boston College. One shy of their season average at just one half of lacrosse. Couldn't have scripted a better start for Northwestern. A 6-2 lead. The Wildcats trying to win their first national championship in 11 seasons. A four-goal lead. You'll be with Drew Carter, Charlotte North, live at Cary when we come back. Do you want your box? Yeah, low key. Do you want it? I don't know. We have, we have a box. Do we? He's he's really tall. I think you're fine. I think you're fine. Don't make me look short though. I mean, I mean, yeah. Try it. Does it look better? Right. Yeah. No, I, that's basically your height. No way. I thought the folks at home could buy that. Yeah, yeah, you're good on the ground. Get that out of here. Thank you. Wait, I can't really hear. What? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 45 to one. Yeah. Are you kidding? Don't worry about it. Dude. We're just, we're just talking. <laughs> give, give me a real one. I don't think, can you see the paper? All right, so we're just going to come out. We can, yeah, we got the monitor here. We're good. We're just talking. So turn up, turnover video first, right? Yeah. What, do, you, do you have anything big picture you want to hit right off the top? I'd say, um... It is halftime at the national championship here in Cary, North Carolina. Northwestern 6, Boston College 2. The Wildcats half an hour away from their first national championship since 2012. It was a hot start for Northwestern here in the national championship game in Cary, North Carolina, alongside the two-time Tawaritan winner, Charlotte North. I'm Drew Carter, and Charlotte, I think we both had goosebumps before this game started, and it seemed like it took the teams a while to settle in. What did you see in the first and second quarter? Definitely. I think it took them a little bit to settle in. It's raining here. The field is wet. There's a lot of slipping going on, but it's an exciting first half, and it's the biggest stage in lacrosse. Yeah, it is really slick here in North Carolina. You heard Jay say it's been raining for at least the last 24 hours. How have you seen that affect the play? I think their sticks are a little wet. You see errant passes that they don't typically make on both sides of the ball. BC had a little bit more turnovers in that first half, but I think they're both startling, starting to settle in a little bit. Yeah, 12 turnovers for Boston College, a team that averages just over 13 turnovers per game. How much of this do you ascribe to the weather versus Northwestern's defense? Their zone looks good, and it's high pressure. They're flying out at this Boston College attack from the jump. In the second quarter, they started to settle in a little bit better, have better spacing, share the ball well, find some gaps in that zone. But I'd like to see them shorten their passes in the second half, make it easier for themselves, especially with the weather conditions today. It's a Boston College team with so much skill, right? We were talking on Friday that Jen Medjid catches everything, you know? It's just it's a little bit harder with the conditions here, but Boston College only down by four. Nice bounce back from them after Northwestern scored the first couple of goals. It seemed like they were in control early. Definitely. I think, you know, Northwestern has found their rhythm from the draw into the offensive end. I think Izzy Skein is being guarded by Sydney Scales. Sydney Scales is a top 1v1 defender. She's bringing the pressure early. Izzy's getting a few touches, and she's getting the offense going, but it, it's people like Madison Taylor stepping up early and big. Yeah, Madison Taylor was amazing, especially from the jump of this game. Keep in mind, folks, this is a freshman we're talking about, a first year at Northwestern, the Big Ten Freshman of the Year. First time we saw her play, she scored five against Syracuse in her first career game. She had the first two today. She was incredibly impressive. She came ready to play in the biggest game of her career 
up so far. She's a talented lefty. You see her and Haley Radigan, another lefty, work on that left elbow together. Haley Radigan is being shut off by freshman Shea Baker on the Boston College team, doing a good job, but Haley Radigan is also getting her touches here and there. She had two goals in that first half, so I'm excited to see how they continue to get their weapons involved. All right, so you mentioned BC shortening up those passes on the offensive side. Aside from maybe the sun coming out here in North Carolina, Charlotte, what else do you want to see in the second? I'm really excited for the second half. I think we're going to see a lot more offensive fireworks from both teams. I think, you know, you can only hold that Boston College offense down for so long. They're full of talent from the midfield in Cassidy Weeks and Bell Smith all the way down to the attack in Kayla Martello, McKenna Davis, Jen Magid, just to name a few. So I think both offenses are going to, going to want the ball big, but possession is everything, especially when it's slippery and the ball is flying out of bounds pretty easily. Someone's winning a national championship in 30 minutes. Right now, Northwestern leads by four. They've got six. The skein train is on the board. Wildcats feeling in skein in the membrane. They're half an hour away from another natty. Northwestern smoking hot entering the national championship on a 20 game win streak. They have stayed blazing in the first half, especially defensively. 6 2, the Wildcats lead the national championship against the Eagles at halftime. The second half is just around the corner. North Carolina, the 2023 Women's Lacrosse National Championship. 
the Big Ten champs, Northwestern, leading the ACC champions, Boston College, 6-2. to two. Boston College, they've kind of made a, a trademark for coming back in big games. We saw it in the semifinal against Syracuse. So Boston College down, but certainly not out of this game. But they've got to stop Izzy Skane, two goals to end that first half and she's got the Wildcats up by four. Oh, you can tell she's a leader out there. She's came into this game inspired after being sidelined with an injury all last year. She wants to win. She can put the team on her back. And when the ball's in her stick, she's extremely dangerous. But really, this Northwestern offense, they put on a show in this first half. Izzy Skein, she's a nice pick and roll. She's got the patience, throws in the fakes, able to score to take you one-on-one. -on -one. And credit the off-ball players for Northwestern creating the space for her. She wants the crowd engaged. They're feeling the emotion. And you look at this first half stats. Northwestern, 16 shots. The real troubling one is for Boston College, only nine. Over two on the free position for Boston College. And the turnovers have been costly. So BC, they had to make a lot of adjustments, both offensively and defensively. 30 minutes left in this game. Izzy Skane in Northwestern, five championship weekend losses in that semifinal since they last won in 2012. They've been waiting a long time to get back to this stage and they are making the most of it so far. A four goal lead but as we said this game far from over. Boston College has shown all season the resiliency to battle back come from behind and win a game. She has Northwestern starts with the ball and a four goal advantage. Let's check in down with Dana on the field. I asked Akisha Walker at halftime, what was your message in the locker room? And she said it was positive, but I had to throw in a little bit of a wake up call in there. And she wants the team to empty the gas tank offensively, defensively, but she really called out that offense. She wants them to play better. Happy with the defensive performance, but we got to take more shots. Izzy Skane trying to pick up where she left off two goals to end that first half. That one almost went for the nation's leading scorer, 27 in white, Izzy Skane. Here's Koi Kendall. Great pass. Madison Taylor's there, and the freshman has a hat trick in the national championship. She has a lot of body control like Izzy Skeen, which I think being compared to Izzy Skeen in any sentence, what a compliment. Two draw control wins in a row for Sam Smith. And she and I like that Northwestern is using the left side of the field. They're taking it away from Koikendall and Skeen, but the lefties are coming out to play in Radigan and Madison Taylor. Yeah, Dana Northwestern only has three goal scorers today, the two lefties. Radigan and Taylor, and then of course Izzy Skein. So three players have Offside. combined for those seven goals. For Boston College, this is a big possession. You're in the danger zone right here. Start of the second half, trailing by five. You'd love to start the third quarter with a goal. They need to get some momentum. We've seen the way that they're able to just feed off the energy, have some big momentum goals, and build off of that. They need a positive spark. They scored two goals in 35 seconds. Outside of those 35 seconds, they are scoreless for the entire game. And another empty possession there. Trying to feed it into Jen Medjish. She's not able to draw the foul. 
and it ends up being a turnover. I think you got to rework the offense, Sheehan. It's not working with Jen Medjid in the middle. She's getting that early double. I'd like to see her pop out like in the first quarter. Well, we saw Dana also in the semifinal game how effective Jen Medjid right. was when she was trying to go to Cage, attack the Cage. She's put herself on the eight meter, drew the fouls. Here's Koikendahl, a jump shot. Just missed it. Koikendahl and Skane, the dynamic duo for Northwestern, so good in the two-man game. playing, guarding on Aaron Koikendall. She'll throw in the fake, so you got to really make sure you don't get baited by her. Bolick spinning her way free and scores! So crafty! The sophomore, Anderson Bolick, puts Northwestern up by six. Northwestern. Watch Bolick. She just makes her defender slip and fall. Where's the slide? She's wide open. Coming down the center of the field. Bolick with a switch to the hands. She had the game-winning goal in the BC regular season game. Such top high-level speed. Good roll dodge. And Melanie Welch for BC just is not able to keep her footing. But there's got to be a slide defensively. The communication there, big breakdown. Northwestern also has won the last four draw controls. And that's where this game becomes make it, take it. When you're down, it's a good thing. But when you're on the receiving end of a team scoring, getting the ball back, scoring again, it can be really tough. And once again, Northwestern wins the draw. Another Samantha White pickup as well. She's been outstanding. Kelly Monty Hiller te telling us she's their most standout defensive player. Was playing in the midfield, but they moved her down to the defensive end. Use her on the draw circle. Want her on the field at all times. Skane on the run. Dolce makes the save, and Boston College needed it from their freshman goalie. And you can see Shea Dolce taking that extra second. Didn't want to just do the quick clear. Sydney Scales able to get open for her. Boston College needs an answer. That's not going to do it. A turnover, 14th of the day. They have been so costly. I think that was a time usually Cindy Scales just brings it down and will dump that off, make sure that she just does the clear, throws it behind. I think she was trying to make something happen, which I don't discredit for. Something has got to be a spark for Boston College. But watch the trail check, the back check. Dana was telling us, Coach Walker and her staff just warning everyone, protect your stick. Radigan weaving through, hands free. Everything but the finish for the lefty. Northwestern with their foot firmly planted on the gas. They've taken all six shots of this third quarter. BC being whistled for that check into the body. To the 12, please. This foul outside the eight meter will put Radigan on the 12 meter. Radigan, so slippery, but couldn't finish it. Shea Dolce, another save, keeping Boston College in it. But the Eagles' offense needs to come alive. Got to have a spark, and it's the turnovers that have been just so killing to their offense. Haven't been able to get into a rhythm. 
14 turnovers in the day for BC. Can they push transition? Here's Medjit trying to make something happen. And North Courtney Weeks now draws shooting space. Northwestern North clogging up space. But a good job for Courtney Four. Weeks just drawing the shooting space. In big moments throughout the season and really throughout their careers, Boston College has leaned Valley on Island, the Weeks Valley. sisters, twins from Bayport, New York. Here's Courtney. Inches away, but can't fire it to the back of the net. Red, red. It'll stay Boston College ball. The Eagles now 0 for 3 on the 8 meter. Twin sister Cassidy was able to run that out. When you're going against a left hand keeper and a right hand shooter, you've got to mix up the placement there. It's going to be very hard to score high. Well, Liberty got a piece of it, then off the pipe. Here's Martello, goes low and scores. Kayla Martello, she's got two of Boston College's three goals today. Martello scored a goal every game this season. She's got to get moving. She can find herself open inside that eight meter. She takes the ball hard to cage. Love the place in the shot. BC's got to mix up the placement. Well, Liberty seeing the ball well high. And look at that delivery of the shot. McKenna Davis with the feed inside. Martello takes it on the run. It goes from her right hand side all the way across her body to that far post. Bottom corner. There's the reaction. BC fans have been waiting to celebrate a goal. Could that be the shot in the arm that Boston College has desperately needed to this championship game? Martello, a three-sport athlete in high school basketball and volleyball player. She has been so reliable throughout her career for Acacia Walker at Boston College. Scored the game winner in the semifinal against Syracuse and two of the Eagles' three goals in the championship. Cole, don't snow. No, do not do that. Do not do that. Hold it. Over the line, Red. Hold. She has it, Dre. BC it, switch up in the draw Ready? control. Courtney Weeks, number six, now taking it. Now Northwestern's won five draws in a row. Make it six. So if you're Boston College, you'll throw anybody in that circle trying to change the outcome, win more possession. Sometimes there's a different stick inside there, different pressure. You gotta mix things up. Possession, BC needs possession. Still plenty of time for Boston College to come back in this game, but I agree with you, Sheehan. In order to come back, you need the ball. Need the ball. Northwestern with control of the draw controls. Nine draw controls, so BC's five. And the shots, Northwestern 22 shots to Boston College's 11. They just have not been able to generate enough shots on their offensive end for Boston College. The defense was a story in the semifinal game. They need to step up. Skein usually automatic from there. Missed it. The nation's leading scorer. She's got two goals today. 97 on the season. One shy of her personal best, which she scored 98 in the 2021 season. Shot clock ticks down to 15. Koikendahl. Not a great angle there. Battle for the ball. Won by Northwestern. What a hustle play. Love seeing those diving plays. Clock continues to run, though. Three seconds. Northwestern has to hurry. And that's a shot clock violation. That's a big win for this BC defense. defense. Look at that quick and doll. She gets her stick in the passing lane. It's Skein. Keeps it alive. The hustle plays for Northwestern paying dividends in the national championship. This that defense. Is a backbreaker for Boston College. It is. This defense just played tremendous defense. Northwestern was able to get a lot of shots off. They weren't able to connect. You finally get possession, and then you turn it right back over. Here's Skein, misfires again. She's missed two on this possession that normally she puts in the back of the net. 
Radigan spinning through the double team, lost the ball. Bell Smith has it for Boston College. How about the two-way midfielder, first team All-American, showing why, but then the giveaway. Skane relentless on the ride, didn't give up, wins it back for Northwestern. Smith just passes that ball behind her BC teammate. You got to lead them. And it's really hard. You have Izzy Skeen, who we've talked about, her pressure on the right, how relentless she is, how she can come up with those checks and cause turnovers. Once you get your stick free and you made the check, you want to release the ball, but you just need that extra breath, the composure, step yourself out of that. Taylor breaks an ankle and scores. Madison Taylor, her fourth goal of the national championship. And that one, the best of the bunch. And I'm gonna I'm gonna tag on the end because that's what they were practicing yesterday like heavily defending if the ball came inside You can lead me there. I'll just pick up one Now Northwestern the number one offense in the nation coming into this national championship But she and the Wildcats defense they have held Jen Medjid scoreless and Jen Medjid was the star of the semifinal game. Five goals on six shots. She's not been able to get into rhythm, clogging up space, sending the double teams early, forcing her to lower angles, getting stick on her stick. They're gonna need her to connect. She is the leader of this offense. This is her last go. She's got a national championship under her belt. Felt the heartbreak of losing in the national championship last year. She can put the team on this back. But the offense as a whole needs to step up. Averaging 3.9 goals per game, zero today. Just has one shot. And that was an emphasis yesterday at practice, She and Northwestern was sending that extra double on the inside. They had someone playing scout offense, pretending to be dead measured. And anytime the ball went into the eight meter in that critical scoring area, Northwestern was sending another body to defend dead measured. I like when dead measured goes on the eight meter on the outside. Create that look, make her a passer. And create the offense that way. And it looks like right now we're watching the officials do a stick check. It appears to be number six on Northwestern, Allie Burkery's stick. If this stick was there doing the, the whole stick check, you can see the list of criteria. It looks like it's good going back. 
Going back to Allie Berkeley, that stick check is good. So they measure the length, the pocket depth, the stringing. Now, the why would there. you call for a stick check there if you're Acacia Walker? The hope there for Boston College was to get possession. So BC has struggled winning possession on the draw control. Northwestern with the edge, nine to five. If the stick was illegal, that would have been a penalty. They would have gotten possession. But now it completely backfires. Northwestern with the ball and a six goal lead. At least the defense is able to set up coming off that possession. So it's oftentimes, we were talking with Charlotte, Nate and I, oftentimes when you call a stick check, you're gonna do it on a player, not an Izzy skating type player. She's scoring a lot of goals. When you score the goal, you have to drop your stick and the pocket is examined. You're gonna call that on a player that's not typically scoring the goals, maybe a defender, somebody else that might have their stick illegal. It's too easy right now for Northwestern. L. Hansen makes it a seven goal lead. Northwestern alum, they're loving this. Look at the spacing. Quickendall, Izzy Skeen gets it down to Hansen. When Izzy Skeen gets the ball, the defenses will freak out, which allows other players to open themselves up. L. Hansen, the grad students, able to get the finish. We got a shirtless fan. It's not, it's not weather for shirtless. They got to be feeling this. Boston College scored those two goals in 35 seconds early in the second quarter to pull within one goal. It was three to two. Since then, Northwestern on a 7-1 run to blow this game wide open. I'm gonna pull you one time, you gotta stay there. Hold it. White, you're good, stay there please. Hold. And Northwestern continues to own the draw control circle. They have won six in a row, making it near impossible for Boston College to come back because they can't even get the ball in this third quarter. Samantha Smith, number 19 in white, has done an excellent job. Fifth draw control and that hard whistle, that's going to be a yellow card on Boston College for a dangerous slash. So number three, McKenna Davis. She's going to be sidelined for up to two minutes. It is releasable on a no Northwestern score. Now this, there was a yellow card early on in the game against Boston College. And Northwestern went to goal on the eight meter. I thought that was a great opportunity. Now, at this, with the score and the time, I think it's a smart decision if they want to work the clock right now. Boston College needs the ball, make the BC, make BC defense be over aggressive. Northwestern's got the upper hand. Shot clock still in effect, so that starts at 90 seconds. But the player up penalty is two minutes. The ACC champion, Boston College Eagles, with their backs against the wall. They need to stop a player down. A team that's won 13 straight games coming into this national championship. They have been trailed by seven all season long. Izzy Skane stings the corner, cashes in on the player up, and it's an eight goal lead for Northwestern. We don't have any inside info, but 
you may as well give her the tour, Tom, along with the national championship trophy if this lead holds. And what makes her so special? So many things. Her size, the way she's able to use her body, the way she can dodge, the way she can create something out of nothing. She's got strength, she's got finesse, she's got power. She sets her teammates up, and then I love the, the cause turnovers, her pressure, her defensively on the ride. She's got that spark, those intangibles and physical gifts. This Northwestern team, they've been close, but you can sense that the ball is precious right now. They're fighting for every opportunity. Just dominating possession. The draw controls are in Northwestern's favor handedly. 10 for Northwestern, five for Boston College. 29 shots for this number one offense, Northwestern, while BC's been limited to 11. BC is as many shots as Northwestern has goals. Bowling goes low, whizzes wide. Nice hustle by Melanie Welch to win that ball back for Boston College. In this third quarter, Northwestern out shooting Boston College 14 to two. They've opened up this lead and doubled it. It was only a four goal deficit at halftime. Now it's eight for BC to try and come back. It would take a Herculean effort. One thing about this Boston College team is they don't fight. They, they don't stop fighting. They commit, and they will finish this game. But some Sammy White is going to make their pursuit all the more difficult. Beautiful ground ball pick up and clear. Northwestern gives it away. Have to say the sophomore out of Baltimore, Sammy White, she has put on a master class defensively for this Northwestern team. Really fun to watch. Great takeaway defender. Keep waiting for Boston College to try and push in transition. They're so good turning defense into offense, but credit Northwestern. They have been so disciplined defensively to get back in their spots. So tough to break down. But Bell Smith does it there. I don't know how. Not a great angle, but Bell Smith pulls one back for Boston College. Smith, a two way mini, gets her second goal of the game. Kayla Martello with two goals, Bell Smith with two goals. You see her numbers when she scores more than three goals. They're really successful. They need her on the board more. The defense is trying to push Bell Smith out. She finds a sliver of space. This goes off the helmet. Wow. Hard collision on the turf as well. BC's going to hate need to build some momentum off of that goal. 41 seconds left in the third quarter. Easily, either team can score a goal. BC, another changeup in the draw. Abby Herod is now taking her take, trying to win possession. Samantha Smith, six draw controls for Northwestern, taking that center draw. She has been sensational getting those possessions. Northwestern has won eight straight draw controls. 
There she wins it to herself. She makes it look easy. It's really hard to do to position it, get it cleanly. Oh, they're gonna call foul Boston College. Thought that could have been a charge. I thought so as well. Fisher was set up with a, a good positioning there to read that. Nope, 21 got fouled, 21 has the ball. It'll be my whistle, ready? Oh, the extension of the arms, good call. Passing from Skane. Koikendall was there. Couldn't control it. And Sydney Scales can take it away. This third quarter finishes. <laughs> Kelly and Monty Hill are so close to what would be a 10th national championship. Two as a player for Maryland. She's already won seven as a coach, and she is 15 minutes away. From that eighth, it would tie her for the most in the history of women's lacrosse. We'll hear from Kelly Amonte Hiller to start the fourth quarter down with Dana. Start of the fourth quarter in the 2023 Women's Lacrosse National Championship in through three quarters. It has been all Northwestern, a seven goal lead for the Wildcats. Let's hear from their head coach, Kelly Amonte Hiller, who's down with Dana. Coach, Sammy Smith at the draw, making it look easy. You won nine straight. What does that possession give your team in this matchup? I mean, possession is everything. It's huge. You know, we have to convert. Uh, last couple possessions, we didn't finish our shots. We didn't execute, so we got to work on our focus and just really convert this this chance. But, um, you know, Sam has been tremendous. We worked really hard. She was really dialed in for today, and uh, she's having a great day. We need, to, we need that to continue. Offensively, we always talk about Izzy Skane, rightfully so, but defensively, you have been so disruptive to the Boston College team. How have you been able to do that? You know, I think just playing as a team, we really came into this uh, you know, they were focused, they know the personnel, they know what they like to do, and, and we wanted to just do it together, and they've been able to do that today. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Go Cat. <laughs> Kelly Amonte Hiller, still 15 minutes to play, but can feel it. A seven-goal lead. And the way we saw Northwestern play in that third quarter, they won all seven draw controls, outshot Boston College 14-3. to three. This is how Kelly Amonte Hiller wants her team to play. And conversations with her over the last couple of seasons, we know she's got a huge passion for MMA and UFC. And she told us that's the ultimate fighting battle royale, if you will. And when you have your opponent right there, down, right Ready? you've got to keep them in the chokehold. And that's exactly what Northwestern has done today. She likes taking tactics from individual sports. It's just you and your opponent, so you can't hide. 
And if you make a mistake, it's on you. So she watches a lot of that for inspiration. And she'll play, she'll play clips throughout the week, too. Right. Pump up clips. We haven't yet seen them. I'm a little disappointed that she hasn't showed us them. Next season, Dana, I'm going to play them throughout the week. <laughs> Pump us up. Middle, middle. Northwestern dominating. And their foot firmly planted on that gas. What's interesting for Boston College is Dolce comes out of the cage and fouls Koikendall. So now Dolce will go behind Koikendall and create an empty net. In the sport of women's lacrosse, if you commit the foul, you have to go behind the shooter. In this instance, it's the goalie who committed the foul. It gets tangled up, gets called for the hold. Feet behind. Stick out. goal Aaron Koykendall has scored in her Northwestern career and yet the most important an eight goal lead for the Wildcats look at her numbers averaging 4.9 points per game one of the five to Waratahn finalists which is the awarded to the best player in the nation Aaron Koykendall amazing as sister what a leader for this team. From Spencerport, New York, two-time first team, all big time, Big Ten. She and Izzy Skeen work so well together. Often gets overshadowed by the amount of attention that Izzy, Izzy Skeen gets. Here we go, I the great team player, excellent shooter, shoots over 50%. Lead the team in assist, can draw the draw and dump. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave it. Okay. Thank you. There was a moment Ready. where I thought maybe she's gonna hold on to the ball, make the BC defense really wait and work the clock. But scoring on an empty net like that, that hurts. That hurts for Boston College. And Northwestern, you can just sense a lightness. They realize, I'm sure, with the agony that they felt, this BC team can come back. Hard whistle. And a card is being issued. For Cassidy Weeks, one of the best players for Northwestern, for Boston College. Now, Northwestern is up a player for up to two minutes. This is Boston College's third yellow card. When a team gets four yellow cards, the two-minute penalty becomes unreleasable. Watch number 12, Weeks, the check across the body. Even though contact may not have been made there, it could be seen dangerous and reckless. And officials can card that. Eleven straight draw control wins for Northwestern. Now the Wildcats up a player up for up to two minutes. What's so interesting is Boston College has scored on four of their last seven shots. But they just can't get the ball. They can't get shots. And it's allowed Northwestern to really run away with this game. And even though the turnover is about even, BC was 17 and Northwestern was 16, which is more than they'd like to have, it just feels like BC's turnovers were more costly. A lot of their turnovers turned right into Northwestern offensive possessions and scores. Dolce keeps it out. Boston College will have to try and get something shorthanded here. Everything just seems harder for Boston College. A, a catch that's usually made by them, a pass that's usually thrown perfectly, just seems to be a little bit off. Sydney Scales on a mission. The first team All-American defender going to goal shorthanded. And guess who wins the ground ball for Northwestern? Sammy White. Six ground balls, three cause turnovers today for the sophomore. This Northwestern defense gets overshadowed with how powerful the offense is, but they are strong. They beat a really good Loyola team the way in this NCAA tournament. Really good defense, and in the end, to make it to this championship weekend, you have to be strong in all facets.
Northwestern holding the ACC champion, BC, just to four goals. Tremendous defensive performance so far. BC now back to full strength. Sydney Scales with the pickup. The Eagles can look to run. They'll have numbers coming out of the box. Here's Courtney Weeks. Two extra players for Boston College here, and that's the type of afternoon it's been. Wide open on the doorstep, should have been an easy goal. It's been an easy goal all season, and the Eagles failed to convert. That's the story. What a save. Oh no, Shea, well, Shea don't you have the crease? It's gonna be. Let's go. Now who's the yellow card on? on is it Hunter Roman? Dangerous play right up into her. Dangerous play running up injury. You hear the officials. That is the fourth yellow card for Boston College. That becomes unreleasable in the second yellow card for Hunter Roman. She is now out of the game. So watch the running up. You heard the officials call on the field. Love having them mic'd up to give us what they're thinking. So Hunter Roman, two yellow cards removed from the remainder of this game. And you can see the heartache on her face. She's an integral part of this defense. Back of the hash, that hurts. Like shooter, so she's now out, and now this penalty is not releasable. So Northwestern can continue to score. And if you're new to lacrosse, usually a goal does release the penalty. In this case, Northwestern can just pile it on, and if it gets to a 10-goal lead, the clock will continue to run. It will not stop like it normally does when it's just a single-digit lead. Dolce again out of her cage. We've seen this a bunch today. Boston College again taking the timeout with Dolce in trouble. That's two timeouts Acacia Walker has had to burn with her freshman goalie stuck in the clearing game. You know, I think it's a timeout that's necessary right now. They want to make sure they've got outlet passes out there. You don't want to leave your goalie hanging and when the Northwestern's a player up, you got to be safe. Northwestern in charge. 12-4 to four lead. A dynasty that has been in a drought for the last 11 seasons. Northwestern, that last championship won in 2012. And from 2005 to 2012, Kelly Amante Hiller's team was in every single national championship game. They went seven and one during that run. Just incredible. Here's Skane, the scoop, and score! How does she do it? Relentless ride! Put that on the Toraton highlight reel. Incredible from Izzy Skane. And the dynasty we were just talking about. There's no stopping them now. They are back to the top of this sport.
mean, Izzy Skane is relentless. I mean, look at that. You see her defensive skills, the pursuit of the ball. She has been on a mission this year. Sat out last year. She is back better than ever. 99 goals this season. 288 a career all-time leader. And if you haven't heard yet, she's coming back next year. Incredible. So she is. What an incredible performance from Izzy Skane, this NCAA tournament. She struggled in the Michigan game. When Northwestern barely escaped that game, they won 8-7. to seven. Izzy Skane shot 1 for 10. That's the worst thing that could have happened for other teams in this tournament because that bothered her. She knew she could have done better. And she has come out, improved her performance, and she's delivered. And the wheels are off for Boston College. Count the goal, plus another yellow card. So Northwestern's going to be two players up. Both of these are unreleasable. So Northwestern will be two players up for the next minute, 27. And then still a player up for an additional 30 seconds. And because that th yellow card foul happened while Izzy Skeen, after she was shooting, that's why they now get possession at the draw. So multiple whammies right here. Your sideline, down another player. Northwestern gets possession back at the draw. These penalties are non-releasable. Now this is a runaway train, and Izzy Skane is the conductor. Four goals for Izzy Skane today. She has as many as Boston College has as an entire team in this national championship. And for those of you looking for the NCAA softball tournament, that is currently airing on ESPN2. We'll send it there once we are finished here in Cary. See a shooting space violation. Aaron Koykendall would be put on the eight meter. One with ball 10, I hear you. So I went with ball, hash I hear mark. you. Northwestern's been good off the eight meter. Keep Three goals 12. on six shots. Keep coming, 12. Now you can see Northwestern just having fun. They feel good with this lead. They're making those extra passes. Great save by Dolce. Jay, I told you many times, if I'm the, the, the team that's in the deficit, I feel good scoring a goal a minute. So Boston College, they still have to believe. And that's why. Two players down, and Jen Medjid breaks through. That is so hard to do. It's hard to score even strength, but two players down, Boston College gets the goal they desperately needed. Can they make a run of this? Transition, we've not been able to see BC been effective in running the fast break. Nice feed and pass. Medjid finally is able to get to the inside. Shea Baker gets the assist on this one. They gotta keep the feet. Boston College has climbed out of deficits before. This is a lot. They're down eight goals now. But nine minutes to go. Two players up for the next 19 seconds for Northwestern to go back to a draw. To get back to even strength. Boston College has not won a draw since the second quarter. 12 in a three. row for Northwestern. Ryan Smith back Turn taking the center draw for Boston College. Samantha Smith been so strong for Northwestern. What a win for Ryan Smith, much needed. And even though you're two players down, time not on your side, you just scored two players down. Do you stay aggressive here? You need to stay aggressive. They want to make sure that if two players down, you don't want to go attacking right now, especially with the time on the shot clock. But they got to push the tempo, and you have to be fearless. If you're not willing to go to cage and create, get off the field, let somebody else in here. It's time to battle back. It'll be back to even strength in 15 seconds.
great feed. Martello was there, couldn't finish it. Back to even strength. La Liberty got a piece of it to deny Medjid. They're getting the backups, which is great. They need to start shooting low. These high shots have not been able to connect. So few shot opportunities. 15 shots for Boston College. That's been what's been troublesome all day long. Northwestern had so many opportunities. 37 shots for them. And you look at those shots when you dig deeper. Boston College just have, has had only eight shots on goal. Northwestern, 20 shots on goal. That horn you heard is an official whistle. Clock continues to run, they'll reset this. Sometimes the officials will stop it to talk about how much time is on the clock. Three goes off for too many. Now find somebody to serve the yeah. green. All cards are new 90. So they are awarding a green card. To the green. There's going to be a green card now issued to Boston College for too many players on the field. Green cards are a one minute releasable penalty. It is releasable on a score, so it does not count towards that yellow card count. They have a green. Red has a green. I'm trying to get her to get somebody to Three very easy to Boston College. Too many players on the field. Green card is back in one minute. You have a green card. You had too many players on the field. So I need somebody out of here. So you have six down here. You have a minute green card. Somebody's got to go back. Somebody's got to go back. Who's coming? Behind the restraining line, not Finally, the field, Cassidy well. Weeks comes off for Boston College. So instead of the seven defenders, they'll only have six. Now this is releasable to Northwestern score. Good. Shot clock gets a reset back to that 90 with the issuance of the card, so they can just hold possession of this ball the entire time if they so like. Boykendall double teamed. So two players have to be open for Northwestern. Stays with the Wildcats. Player up for another 20 seconds here. BC's got to be careful being over aggressive. Don't need another yellow card. to full strength, but not in time. Samantha Smith, who has dominated the draw, now gets her goal. And the Wildcats lead by nine. The offense for Northwestern has been breathtaking at times. They've made this defense spin, the extra passing being thrown around. And Samantha Smith, what a job. She steps, she fakes, she dodges, and then she scores. A fan base that grew accustomed to winning. Winning seven of eight national championships from 2005 to 2012. Right now. Right now. They have waited 11 ye long three. years to get back three. to this She's moment. They only have to wait seven more minutes. Seven different goal scorers for Northwestern. Boston College has been limited just to three. Kayla Martello with two, Bell Smith with two, Jeff Medjid with one, Sammy White. 
comes up with another key draw control win. She's been amazing. And just a sophomore. To check it, and you continue to foul her trying to get there. Grew up watching that dynasty being built. So many championship weekends at that time held in the Baltimore area. A little girl that would go and watch Northwestern win. Now she's part of a national championship as a sophomore playing for the Wildcats. Jay, the first time she ever watched lacrosse was in 2010 when Northwestern played at Towson. And now her team up by 10, so this clock will continue to run. The bench is loving it, and of all the players on the field know exactly what that means. 10 goal lead, the clock is running. They Although it doesn't run through it. a timeout, so that's why right. Acacia Walker took a timeout to preserve that clock. But in the game, look at the faking. Erin Korkendall, she's got excellent stick skills. The patience, the body control she shows. Look at this in slow motion. <laughs> she gets Shay Dolce dancing. She must have grown up listening to you, Sheehan, because you always say, throw in an extra fake. She threw in about four or five for you. And then she cashes in on it. What a score. Going back to that Sammy White story, Jay, you started to tell. She watched Taylor Thornton play, a four-time All-American for Northwestern. That was her first lacrosse experience, 2010 in Towson, Northwestern was playing Maryland and she started rooting for Maryland because there was someone on the field that looked like her. That's how important representation is and Taylor Thornton, one of the greats to come through the Northwestern program. She decided, I'm gonna go to Northwestern and we all know Kelly Amonte Hiller is not afraid to recruit athletes. Both Taylor Thornton and Sammy White, insane athletes. And I talked to Sammy White yesterday at practice and she told me she wants to be that example for the next generation of lacrosse players. She has been fun to watch. And just revisiting her stats that popped up there, but there's worth another mention. Six ground balls, leads the team in ground balls today. Three calls turnovers and five draw controls. Possession has been the name of the game for Northwestern. <laughs> Those stats are crazy. Crazy. And I know Izzy Skane will likely be go, the MVP, go. but to put up those kind of stats at a national championship when possession is at such a premium, a big reason why Northwestern has won this national championship is the draw control circle. And Sammy White, a big part of that, along with Samantha Smith. And what's crazy, both of them are sophomores. A lot of talent left on this field. Erin Koykendall still deciding if she's coming back next year. She does have an extra year. Izzy Skeens will be back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the type of day it's been for Boston College. You've seen them make that pass all season long, but it has not worked today. Talking with Acacia Walker and her team, they knew that they had to have a better offensive performance than they did in the semifinal game against Syracuse, and they only put up eight goals. 17 shots only in that game, 17 shots right now in this final game. Haven't been able to make the adjustments. I think it'd give a lot of credit to Northwestern. The ball has bounced their way. Empty net. Sammy White puts it in. We were just talking about the star sophomore, and now she adds a goal.
Northwestern lost their opening game of the season, 16-15 to Syracuse. Sammy White again. She is a magnet to the ball right now. That's a hard foul. Surprised no card issued. They're going to end their season winning 21 straight games in a national championship. They have certainly done this in convincing fashion. They had a second round scare to Michigan. Only won that game 8-7. But really since that moment they have not looked back. Boston College continues to battle. Martello. She's been the lone bright spot for Boston College. She has half of the Eagles goals today. Boston College down by 10. You've got to throw everything at it like they've done for much of this second half, but it's just led to more turnovers. And the one thing that will become a talking point for Boston College is this is a remarkable run. Trainer. To make six straight national title games is okay. incredible. It is not normal. No, no, it's not normal. And even though <laughs> it's normal for them, they have to understand what, how special it is. A, a, a completely special run. It gets tainted a little because in this title game, they'll move to just one win and five losses. So as good as the run has been to get here, outside of that 2021 national championship against Syracuse, they have failed to pull it out in the final game. It's really hard to win this game. It's really hard to have that level of success to make it to Final Four weekend year in, year out. It's something that North, this Northwestern staff understands. Talking to Kelly Monty Hiller all season long about how, you know, she had put a lot of pressure on herself to make it back every single year. And they went through a time where they were building back up again after their string of national championships. Gotta imagine that this will taste ever so sweet. And maybe she will appreciate even more so than some of the many that she's won as a coach. Koikendall from deep. And that certainly seals it for Kelly Amonte Hiller in Northwestern. Western alum. This better make get up tomorrow. That's from Steph Curry range. All smiles from Kelly Amonte Hiller as she nears her eighth national championship as a head coach, which will tie Cindy Timschel, who she played for at Maryland. What a special achievement. Cindy Timschel is a legend. The coaching tree beneath her, Acacia Walker and Kelly Amonte Hiller both playing underneath. Cindy Timshaw and Kelly Amani Hiller to, to tie Cindy is something special. And we've talked all season long, this Northwestern team has a sense of joy, has a special spark to them. They've appreciated the journey along the way, every step, every win. And you're seeing all the faces of everyone connected to this team right now. Well, they left no doubt today. After an 11 year drought, Northwestern back on top. The Wildcats are national champions.
This has been on the makings for years. A long season. But the journey ends a 21 and 1 season in Northwestern with a national championship. They held that heartbreak of the semifinal loss very close from last year. And now they're riding high. Now they put the sport on notice winning seven of eight championships from 2005 to 2012. Kelly Amante Hiller has waited 11 long years to get back to this moment, and they made the most of it. They left no doubt today. Deserved champions. And the heartbreak for Acacia Walker in Boston College as they fall to one and five in championship games. Kelly Amante Hiller, her eighth national championship as a head coach, it ties her mentor, the coach she played for at Maryland, Cindy Timshall, and Dana's joined with the winning head coach now. Kelly, I know you stand here with a lot of pride and gratitude. What does this championship mean to you? Honestly, it, it means everything. I can't even tell you what went into this. So many years from 2012, the last time we won, with so many alumni, so many parents, uh, so many coaches that have helped us get back to this point. You see a lot of them in the crowd tonight. And it just, I mean, it means so much. I'm so proud of this group. I said, you know, in the summer before the season, we have to get them to believe. They believed in everything. And it's, it's, it's really sweet. I'm so proud of this group. I'm so proud of Northwestern and all the people involved in our program. You talk about the people involved in your program. Cindy Timschel, your coach at Maryland, you tie her for eight titles. How significant has she been in your journey? Oh my God. <laughs> we dodged it. About Kelly, but I dug. <laughs> Cindy Timshaw, I owe everything to her. She took a chance on a small town girl from Hingham and taught me everything everything about mindset. I knew how to work hard, that's what my parents taught me, but Cindy taught me more. And I have carried every lesson with me. Um, she's a great mentor, I still lean on her. For, for everything I have. I think when you look at your Northwestern team, you got so many different scores. How about Madison Taylor, a freshman on the biggest stage? How happy are you to have her for a few more years? You know what, last year after we lost, her mom texted me and said, I think Madison, Madison said after that game, I think she can help you. And we knew she could from day one. Um, she is just a tremendous person. A tremendous athlete and she's not afraid to step up in big moments and she's done that all season long for us this was just another day congratulations coach go celebrate with your team go cats she ends every interview I've ever hear her give with a go cats that one means more after a national championship and let's take a look at our capital one player of the game Samantha White, what a performance. One goal, seven draw control wins, three cause turnovers. She added six ground balls as well. She was everywhere. Everywhere, that's the story of the game. They dominated possession, they did the little things. They frustrated BC, they held them to minimal amount of shots, and they delivered on the scoreboard. It was a team effort, you heard Kelly Monty Hiller, I think probably the happiest I've ever seen her in the interview. I think this one is special. She's won so many national championships, both as a player and as a coach. She's talked about that belief. She loves this team. Congratulations to her and the Northwestern Wildcats. A extremely job well done. You see the relief and the fun they are having. That is joy. The tears, the emotion from Izzy Skane, who will certainly go on to win Player of the Year, the Tawaraton.
this coming week. A remarkable season ends with a dynasty getting back to the top of the mountain. Dominant effort. Strong, strong performance. Izzy Skane, sideline last year, back better than ever. And she'll be back for one more season. Unstoppable. Izzy Skane and Northwestern National Champions, thank you so much for joining us today and all season long for our terrific crew behind the scenes that does such a good job. She and Stanwick Birch, Dana Boyle on the sideline. I'm Jay Alter. Thank you for watching and congratulations to the Northwestern Wildcats.